Welcome, Hudson Valley. This is Connor Walsh, host of In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's award-winning public affairs and issues program. This week on In Touch, we speak with Rich and Cassie Parenti from Clock Tower Grill. Rich and Cassie are committed to fighting the broken food system. The duo believes in serving high-quality, locally sourced food. We talk about their process and the amazing themed events that they offer the Hudson Valley community, such as their Stranger Things night, the menu viewing party, and so much more. We invite you to join us and listen to a previously recorded conversation between Rich, Cassie, and myself here on In Touch. Because of the awesome success of In Touch over the last year, we are expanding. We are launching a new spin-off series under the In Touch umbrella called Town Square Spotlights. These spotlights focus on amazing celebrities and leaders passing through or those who are living here in the Hudson Valley who are making an impact in pop culture. You can check out our latest spotlights with Golden Globe nominated actress Mel Harris, musician and creator of the Lifted Project documentary John Burton, political activist, philanthropist and father to musician Lin-Manuel Miranda, Louise A. Miranda Jr., and director, producer, and actor known for his roles in The Sopranos and The Good Wife, Jerry Adler, wherever you listen to In Touch. Hello, Hudson Valley. You're listening to In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's award-winning public affairs and issues program, and we got a great episode for you guys today. One thing that you know that I love doing is highlighting local businesses, especially those who are offering great experiences and great food, really helping out the community all around and it's just tasty all together. So I'm really happy to talk with these two today. With us from Clock Tower Grill, we have Rich and Cassie Parenti. Guys, how are you? Fantastic. Good. How are you? Doing all right. And I just got to say, I'm really happy for you guys with everything that you got going on. I've been reading up on everything, seeing everything that you guys got, just talking to you guys before we got on the mic. Really cool things happening over here. For those who are unfamiliar with Clock Tower Grill, could you tell us a little bit of an overview of the restaurant and also where it is so people can find you? So, yeah, we're in Brewster, New York, right at the crossroads of 684 and 84, about a mile north. Um, we've been there since 2013, so just under 11 years. Cassie and I opened the restaurant together with an idea that we wanted to support local. That's what we do. We support a, lo- a lot of ton of farms. Actually, in 2016, we bought a farm just by chance. We were joking around, thought it would be a great I- <laughs> great idea if we could find a farm, and went on Zillow and uh, found a farm. Next day, we told one of our customers who was a uh, realtor joking around, and he's like, ah, you should buy it. And we're like, yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, he went home that night and came back in and said, not only is it, I think you guys could do this, it price was reduced and uh, we started the paperwork and a couple months later we bought a farm. That's amazing. And I just love how like spur of the moment that situation is. It's like how many people can say it's like, oh yeah, we were just looking around and yeah, we just bought a farm (laughs) on a whim. But that's great. So since you brought up the farm, you've had that since 2016. Tell us what has that been like since owning the farm? Have you guys, either one of you had farm experience before purchasing the property. I grew up on like a gentleman's farm and my friends were dairy farmers so like I spent the whole time so I knew what I was getting myself into. Rich on the other hand I think got a huge awakening <laughs> on like the whole idea of animals and raising and working and never stopping and they're always there. Oh I'm sure it's a continuous thing. Mm-hmm. Rich what was that awakening like so, for you? Again we, I had no idea like Cassie had horses, and we, I spent time at the horse farm where she kept our horse, and now we were able to keep it at home. And then uh, we ended up with a couple more horses and a couple more horses. <laughs> and then uh, we started visiting farms, learning about animals, farms that we were already buying from, where we ended up getting our, like, breeding stock and our stock from. I, you know what? Like, at first, I, I didn't really – it wasn't until – probably a couple months in of having some pigs and sheep on the farm and we had our farrier stop over we were playing with the piglets and <laughs> he walks over to cassie he's like what are you doing in there and cassie's like i'm playing with the uh, pigs he's like why i just throw food at mine and walk away she's like these animals are here for a short time and we know why they're here i'm gonna give them as much love as possible and that is actually what changed the, my whole perspective on farming brought farming and food together for me and just made me appreciate the animals and realize that they do have personalities and uh to respect them is i really love that and i appreciate that perspective because it's not a perspective we have very often here on in touch 
we might talk about consuming everything, but we don't always talk about the process. Hence why I'm so glad that we're talking about this today. Now, Cassie, since you did have a background in farming, what was that like for you? What was that like growing up and just being around it and then to have something of your own now starting in 2016? So what I had at home as a kid to what I have now is two totally different demons. Okay. Like, because, of course, it wasn't mine, and, like, I could walk in and be like, oh, the ponies are at home. But Mm -hmm. it was a gentleman's farm, so they were raised as pets, and what we had was pets, and that's what it was. Where now, like, we're raising as, well, pets and food, but it's ours. We take care of it. We're responsible for it. And sometimes you just do what you got to do, I think. Sometimes you're in a situation, and you're like, okay, duct tape it is. (laughs) <laughs> so, duct tape solves everything. <laughs> it, it really duct tape and Baylor's twine is what runs my farm. Oh, there you go. So you should get sponsored by like a few of those companies <laughs> yeah. and like Gorilla. I know Gorilla has their uh, set of duct tape and everything. That would be good. Yeah. Um, I don't know any specific brands for twine or any yeah. or twine or rope, <laughs> but we'll find them. We'll we'll search them out. That would be yeah. fantastic. But with that, that's awesome. So since 2016. Is it still just you guys managing that farm, or do you have you had other help since? What does that look like in the development of it over the last eight years? It's just us. It's mainly Cassie. I just fall around and stumble <laughs> around and try to remember every day what to do. But yeah, she's the driving force on the farm, and uh, every year we try to improve the farm. God bless. Honestly, that that's a lot because you're running the farm, but then you also have the restaurant all at the same time, and I think bridging those worlds is so big and so important and we'll get into the restaurant specifically in a second but let's talk about the background in the culinary arts rich you grew up in the area but you also went to the culinary institute of america one of the united states most premier culinary institutions and just to have that kind of background that must be really cool what was that like having that decision to go to the culinary and what has that given you since then? Culinary, it was always something that was in here in my backyard growing up in LaGrange. I knew I wanted to go from a very young age, and my parents supported it. They actually sent me to a couple of boot, like little weekend camps for kids and stuff there. Growing up, I, you know, going to Arlington, I also went to BOCES, and I started my first job when I was like 13. My parents said, I said to my parents, I want a TV for my bedroom, and they said, if you want to go get a job, and I took it seriously and went and got a job at a local deli. They're like, where were you? I was like, oh, got a job. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, I started, when I was 13, started cleaning shelves, but quickly started watching the people doing stuff. So I started making salads and making pizza. And then when I was 16, I knew, like, I thought that if I wanted to continue in the culinary field, I needed to work in a French restaurant. So at the time, I thought, you know, there was this restaurant called Luxembourg in Hopewell, and I'm like, well, that must be the restaurant I have to go work at. So every Friday, I'd take my resume that said Billings Deli and bring it to the owner, uh, Roy, at the time, and hand it to him and ask him for a job. And he'd be like, sorry, kid, we're not hiring. And it could have been a week, could have been six months, I don't remember. But eventually, he said, uh, you know, show up tomorrow, bring your knives and your uh, whites, and uh, you can start. So I went home, told my parents I needed to borrow their knives and emptied out my <laughs> tackle box and found some kitchen toys and put it in there. And next morning I wake up and mom had some knives that she bought for me, worst offs, laid out. Mm. And uh, I was super excited and went to work. And then uh, when it came time to go to culinary school, I knew that I always wanted to go to CIA, but now it's in your backyard and I'm 18 and I want to go away. Mm. So I told, uh, so I applied to Johnson Wales and got accepted. And I told, the chef at Lash and Board, uh, Lenny at the time, I said, Lenny, I'm going to go to uh, Johnson & Wales. And I got accepted. He's like, cool. Good luck. You don't work here anymore. Oh. <laughs> I said, really? He's like, yeah, you don't want to go to that school. Second rate. Because of Lenny, I actually applied to CIA, got in, and uh, started my journey there. And it was an amazing experience. Um, I mean, one being in the Hudson Valley is beautiful, right on the Hudson but, uh, you know, the chef's instructors are very professional, very competitive, which I think I'm for sure. me was, was very good. You know, everybody's trying to outdo everybody and show each other up, and uh, it just made for a really good experience. So that's really cool. So you guys really, as you are in your business today, bringing the farm to table all together, you have the culinary background. You definitely have the farming background. Cassie, did you have much uh, restaurant experience before creating things in 2013? I was more in the horse business, so I guess I had the customer service aspect of it, but then the front of the house was just 
a learning experience through like serving and stuff like that. Oh, that's awesome. But it's so. cool that you're able to synthesize both these things, mm -hmm. both your past into all this. And I think that's incredible. And I definitely want to get into the restaurant itself now. We've done so much of the background. But first, you're listening to In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's Public Affairs and Issues Program. We are speaking with Rich and Cassie from Clock Tower Grill. We've been going into the background on bringing the culinary side and the farm side together to make this beautiful synthesis that's offering fantastic food over in Brewster. So with Clock Tower Grill celebrating over 10 years now, that is awesome. You guys truly are farm to table. You guys have your own farm. You guys bring it out. What does that look like for your customers? What kind of experience are you looking to give when somebody shows up to the restaurant? I mean, I think, I mean, I can't speak for both of us, but I think it's a sense of pride. It's, uh, you know, knowing that we've, we're doing the, as much of the right thing as we know we could do, um, whether it's Cassie behind, you know, making cocktail specials, using local ingredients, local spirits, local, pretty much everything, you know, that we could find in the kitchen, just supporting as many local farms as possible. We just want people to be aware of and enjoy what they can, you know, that we can find here in the Hudson Valley and in Connecticut and in the area and know that that can be provided to you. You don't have to seek elsewhere or go out of state to find this stuff. It's all here and plentiful and we want them to enjoy it. So you talk about with your own farm raising things yourselves, but then there's also the other farms as well nearby. What kind of produce is it that you're receiving from? It sounds like pretty much everything is all fresh, all ready to go. But what are the things that these farms around here specialize in that you guys get to showcase? Depending through the season. So through throughout the whole season, it's different offerings. Because, of course, growing season and what vegetables need is when it comes available. So like bok choy in the summer to bok choy in the winter because it's a cold weather fruit vegetable to like, you know, getting the fresh tomatoes when I screw everything up in the garden. <laughs> then we again buy them there. Eggs from the farmers when they're available, if not through a friend of ours that lives next door to, you know, Farms to Table that delivers through Hudson Valley and brings all the farms to us. Farms to Table is a huge tool for us because it's, they do all the, they do a lot of the hard work and buy from a lot of local farms. But I mean, when you, when you talk about farms, it's not just lettuce, it's not just meats, it's everything else. It's all the artisan cheeses, breads, you know, uh, milk, you know, everything that we use. You know, like we did a dinner or we did a couple dinners over the summer, but yeah, you know, we actually I went through everything and looked at what it took to to feed forty people, and we used thirty five different farms. Oh wow! All between here and Albany. Yeah, yeah, seventy miles. That's amazing. Everything, was, everything was sourced, so mostly sourced through Hudson Valley and through like our local community. So. And and it's you know not only are you telling a story, but it's the quality. And when you use quality ingredients, you don't need to get crazy. You just need you know you can showcase what you're serving without a lot of stuff on the extra stuff on the plate to you know try to make something taste better that doesn't need to taste better. That's already delicious as its own you know like using stuff at the height of the season you know that makes a difference getting all the flavor out of it and just bringing just showcasing it for what it is you're not having to mask it yeah, yeah. you're not able, having to hide it it is what it is and you're just showing how amazing it is coming from around here so with working with farm to table with all these local farms how has that been to nurture those kinds of relationships as he said like 40 meals came from 35 different groups. That's a lot of networking. That's a lot of interpersonal connections right there. Some of the farmers probably don't wish we didn't have their phone number, but you know, like, <laughs> you know, we, we build relationships and long, you know, long time relationships, but yeah, you know, like when we bought the farm, you know, those relationships we tapped into to for help, you know, like for advice and stuff. So we we're, you know, calling our, one of the, our pork farms at three o'clock in the morning when we were having issues with a pregnant sow, asking them for their you know opinion. And then now here we are eight years in and now farms are calling us for advice. I have a lot of respect for what we do too, because we, I know we bust our butts. It sounds like enough people have respect for what you guys are doing and you guys have established yourselves now. So if people are calling you guys today, that really shows how far y'all have been able to come. That's pretty impressive. And then, you know, just telling us, sharing the story, how, how important it is to support local. You know, more and more people appreciate it, but, you know, I think there's we still have a long way to go. How how important it is, you don't need to buy stuff in the grocery stores that come in styrofoam packages. There's so many places locally that you can support, and that's what's really important. And it's better for you, you know, better for your bodies, better for your families. 
With the restaurant, with Clock Tower Grill, you guys host a number of tasting dinners and themed events. Could you give us a few examples of the things that you guys have done and what people can expect? So in the summers, we, we've actually started doing dinners on the farm. Um, we're going through some permitting fun right now. That should be resolved by this summer, which is awesome. We do it in the back of the property by the pond, very intimate, you know, storytelling um, about the food that's on your plate. And then we also, every month we do dinners, whether it's Valentine's Day doing a tasting dinner. Um, New Year's Eve we do, we just did a 12-course tasting dinner telling a story of our culinary journey um, paired to music. Did a uh, dinner series of culinary legends like Julia Child, Paul Perdone, um, honoring them. Uh, it's not do, all that serious, though, all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's not all serious. We have a, we like that fun. We're doing a junk food dinner. We we do junk food dinner where it's like a like an interpretation on junk food from you know our childhoods, but like done right. And we have just as much fun with the packaging as we do making the product that goes into it. Our printer literally lives for that time of the year. <laughs> she just like sits there and gnaws at the bit, waiting for what Rich will come up with. Yeah, in the eleventh hour, I'm like, oh, I just had a great idea. And she's like, all right, I'll get it to you. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. What kind of those 11th hour ideas have you popped out when it comes to packaging and things? For SpaghettiOs. Oh, really? Yeah, and he did the cans to be each one of our chefs was on the can. Oh, my God. There was each one of them had a picture of, like, one of the guys in the back. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, Yeah. and that's that's how it was presented. We found cans that could be opened. Mm-hmm. sealed and opened at Franks and Beans. And we, they open them when they get the can, and it's got our logo on it. Yeah. The Stranger Things dinner. What did you do? You did something with You had a Stranger that. Things dinner? Yeah. 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 I told you, it's not all serious. It's, it's all you, over the place. I love gotta, this. you got to have fun with it. Absolutely. The well, Stranger put, Things, I forget what we did, but there was something weird that happened on that one at the last minute. Yeah, we like to have fun. You know, and, the, and, the, and I like to dive in and do the research, too, so I get all, you know. Be able to tell a story with it. We did a what was the one what was the movie where they everybody gets killed at the end? With the, oh, the, the menu. The oh, menu. the menu. Yes. Yeah, we did that. That was tough. We so that was. I hope you didn't get rid of everybody at the end like no, they did in the movie. We did. Thought about it. We did. <laughs> we did the exact dinner simultaneously to as the movie the, to the movie, which you know that's wow. That was, I think eleven courses in in ninety minutes. That's a lot. Of, that's insane. That's a lot of handwork quick that is insane so as they presented it we presented it to our guests oh that's cool next time you do like one of those movie things let me know i gotta come by for that that would be insane but that's the kind of fun that you could find at a place like this here in the hudson valley and i'm so happy that we are having them here on this episode right now again you're listening to in touch town square media the hudson valley's public affairs and issues program we're speaking with rich and cassie from clock tower grill and talking about the wonderful fun events that they do, along with bringing locally sourced, really good produce, products, meat, vegetables, everything to your table so you can enjoy. Guys, thank you so much for being here on this episode. For those who are looking to enjoy Clock Tower Grill, what you guys produce, where can they find you? Where? It, what's the address? But then also, where should they follow you online? Is there a website? Do you have social media where people can hit up? What's the best way? Instagram, Rich is always posting, so it's Clock Clock Tower Grill. Um, We're at 512 Clock Tower Drive in Brewster, New York. And Facebook, we have Clock Tower Grill as well. Terrific. And I'm sure that you got all these things posted about all the different events, like the Stranger Things, as you said. Do you have pictures of the cans of like SpaghettiOs with everybody's faces? You probably have to scroll quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It's been- It'll be worth it. I will scroll. <laughs> I will scroll. I will definitely put something out there. And of course, all links and information will be in the description of this episode. And if I can find those pictures, I am putting them in the description in the article for this because that would be hilarious. <laughs> but that also personalizes everything. And that's so cool. Yeah. The personalization. That's what we try to do. That's important to us, you know. Like we're not we're not a cookie cutter restaurant, and we tr- take pride in you know having a collect. I, I don't know if eclectic is the right word, but you know, very different menu. Have fun. Yeah, and if it's not fun, then you shouldn't be doing it. Well, I'm glad you guys are having fun, and I'm going to have fun the next time I stop by. I'm looking forward to this. This should be awesome. But again, for more information on Clock Tower Grill, you can check out the uh, description of this episode. Rich, Cassie, thank you so much for being here on In Touch. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. This has been this week's edition of In Touch, the award-winning public affairs and issues program that runs across Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley radio stations. We want to thank Rich and Cassie from Clock Tower Grill. 
To learn more about their awesome dining experiences, visit clocktowergrill.com. Of course, all links and information can be found in the description of this episode. Whether you've been listening for a while or you just joined us, thank you. You can find In Touch episodes new and old on your favorite streaming services like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. That and listen on demand with your Town Square Radio Station mobile app. Of course, you can still find all articles and audio under the In Touch tab on this radio station's app and website. And don't forget, we're also on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at InTouch underscore HV. I've been your host, Connor Walsh. Until next time, stay curious, keep an open mind, and as always, I'm glad we get to spend some time.